Does your partner blame and criticize you a lot, disregard your feelings and deny the truth? Are you feeling emotionally drained, confused, and filled with self-doubt about what's going on in your relationship? If you answered yes to any of these questions, stay with me and I'll explain why you might be feeling this way and what could be happening in your relationship. Hello, I'm Amy Baer, the Emotional Abuse Counselor. This is the first in a series of videos that will answer your questions about your partner's hurtful behavior. You'll be able to recognize the tactics of emotional abuse and how those tactics affect you. You'll gain insight into your relationship, how you might be contributing to the trouble, and what to do about it. I've had many years of experience with emotional abuse as a psychotherapist and also from my own experience as a young adult. I've written a book called From Charm to Harm, The Guide to Spotting, Naming, and Stopping Emotional Abuse in Intimate Relationships. You can find my blog, From Charm to Harm, on psychologytoday.com or my website, heartwisecounseling.com. And you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. I hope these videos will give you a way to rise out of the turmoil and start on the path toward healing. Okay, let's start with the basics. Everyone knows what verbal abuse is. It's yelling, angry criticism, name-calling, hostile moodiness, and deliberate humiliation. That kind of treatment is obvious. While both verbal abuse and emotional abuse are patterns of controlling behavior, there's a difference. The difference is that emotional abuse is often hard to recognize because it's disguised as normal behavior. Where there's emotional abuse, there's often verbal or even physical abuse, but not always. Let's look at some examples of emotional abuse. First, let me say that anyone can be emotionally abusive, regardless of gender, age, sexual orientation, race, ethnicity, religion, or profession. Let's say you're a woman with a male partner. He might say something that hurts you deeply, then downplay his comments and accuse you of being too sensitive. He might deceive you into thinking that you're to blame for his anger, or he'll discount your feelings and needs as if they are unimportant. He may try to convince you that there's something wrong with you if you don't agree with him or meet an unreasonable demand. He may describe his unjustified criticism as being for your own good, or try to make you feel stupid or flawed in some way without actually saying it. You may try to have a rational discussion with him about his behavior, but walk away feeling empty and frustrated over his careless brush off. He may try to convince you that he loves you and would never hurt you, even though he has hurt you countless times. Other tactics include moodiness, unwarranted anger, or staying angry for hours or days without telling you the reason why. He may use your vulnerabilities against you or undermine your accomplishments. There may be financial or religious control, there are many more emotional abuse tactics and you can find them in my book. So, if you're blaming yourself, stop it. Your partner's abuse is not your fault. It's not the result of your flaws or shortcomings. Don't accept that as a justification. There's never any good reason for abuse. So you may ask, why is my partner using these tactics against me? Well, you must understand that emotional abuse tactics are intended to control your thoughts, feelings, and actions so that you will doubt yourself and give in to your partner's demands. This behavior is nothing short of psychological intimidation. It's the very definition of emotional abuse. It's especially hard to spot from someone who is supposed to care about you. Now, what's especially confusing about emotional abuse is that there can be episodes of warmth and affection. This can feel like love, but be aware that even good behavior can be an attempt to manipulate you the truth is that his capacity to love you is stunted by the war going on inside of him. There are some very disturbing reasons for your partner's abuse. One major reason is that abusive behavior is a major psychological defense against toxic shame. Toxic shame is acquired in childhood and can survive into adulthood. It causes a profound sense of inadequacy, deficiency, and worthlessness. People who have toxic shame are driven by subconscious hurt, fear, anger, and resentment. They see everything through the lens of their original pain. Now, healthy shame is different. It creates appropriate boundaries in our lives and gives us the ability to distinguish between what's right and what's wrong. It gives us permission to accept and express the full range of our feelings. Healthy shame gives us permission to be human. 
Whether a child develops healthy shame or toxic shame is fully dependent on their childhood experiences and the beliefs associated with those experiences. Here's what happens. Children are dependent on their parents for their emotional well-being. To develop a healthy sense of self, they need caring and attentive parents to help them make meaning out of their thoughts, feelings, needs, wants, and imaginings. For example, Children need to know it's okay to have feelings like fear, sadness, loneliness, that it's okay to need love and attention. In other words, parents need to teach their children how to love themselves and others. When parents shame their children for these natural instincts and emotions, children create distorted beliefs about themselves. They believe they must be wrong or bad in some way. Children with toxic shame can become adults who hide their true feelings. They take on so many layers of defense and pretense that they lose all conscious awareness of their authentic selves. In place of what should have been a healthy sense of self is a profound feeling of emptiness. Many conceal their pain with behavioral disguises and cover-ups. They can become aggressive, controlling, and manipulative. They can appear to be a very giving and caring person in public but their loved ones see a very different side of them. The inability to be grounded in a sense of who you are can be tormenting. In an attempt to numb their pain, people with toxic shame often pursue power and success. They may engage in risky behaviors such as substance abuse, pornography, reckless sexual encounters, or other obsessions. They have learned to dissociate and suppress their painful feelings from an early age. So as adults, when these acceptable, unacceptable feelings such as hurt, fear, shame, and vulnerability come up, they see their partners as the cause of their anguish. By defeating and humiliating their partners, they can temporarily fend off feelings of deficiency and desolation. This behavior gives them a brief sense of power and success. Hiding from their own feelings prevents them from being able to acknowledge the feelings of others. They can't be open and honest with themselves or anyone else. They feel justified in their harsh treatment and have an intense aversion to taking responsibility for ruthless behavior because that would confirm their feelings of worthlessness. People who emotionally abuse their partners are caught up in a self-defeating cycle. They want to love and be loved. Instead, they push their partners away with behaviors that are driven by a desperate need to conceal the part of themselves that would allow them to truly love someone. You might ask yourself, how did I get involved in a relationship with an emotionally abusive person? Well, in the beginning of a relationship, everyone presents their best side. You don't really know the person with whom you're getting involved. People who are emotionally abusive are particularly very good at concealing their dark side. They typically exude charm and favorable character traits. They shower their intended partner with attention, support, and encouragement. They often pursue their new love interest intensely and push them to get involved too quickly. Once you're emotionally invested in the relationship, you may find yourself explaining your partner's questionable behavior, making excuses for it. Little by little, you'll feel that something is off in your relationship, but you won't quite be able to put your finger on it. When your partner hurts you in some way, he may make excuses, apologize, and promise never to do it again. Over time, he'll accustom you to his manipulations. You won't know what you're into until you're in the thick of it. You'll become desperate for ways to appease him and get the love and attention you thought you had early on. Of course, your own unresolved psychological issues play into the drama and can keep you stuck in a fog of shame, guilt, self-doubt, and inertia. I have a lot to say about that, and we'll talk about that in another video. One thing must be clear. A systematic pattern of emotional abuse is commonly misconstrued as a character trait, moodiness, or an anger problem. It is none of these. It is a serious psychological disorder. Since it's largely subconscious behavior and stays hidden, therapeutic invention is necessary. But to fully participate in therapy, abusive partners must have the courage and willingness to break out of the constraints of their past conditioning. They must be willing to accept the truth and stop justifying their abusive behaviors. A skilled therapist can help them break through the barrier that denies them access to their true feelings 
and reintegrate their lost self. Only then can they lose the compulsion to inflict hurtful behavior on others. So, by being aware of the dynamics of your partner's abusive behavior, you gain knowledge and power over it. I'll talk more about the underlying causes of the abusive behavior in upcoming videos, along with many more aspects of emotional abuse. How you got involved with an abusive person, how to protect yourself and your family, and how to start on a path toward healing. I'll talk about whether or not you can help your partner, and what to do if you have a loved one in an abusive relationship. I'll even talk about other types of abusive relationships. I hope these videos will give you some measure of comfort, support, and guidance. I welcome your comments and questions. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and share it with others. Thank you for watching.